In this topic, you will learn how to define products that will be used in the purchasing process, including the product category to define the type of flow and defaults to simplify data entry process, product attributes with settings specific to purchasing, and product sites for defining receiving sites. Now, purchasing provides you with the flexibility to determine which purchase step or flow best fits your company's needs. For example, you can choose to begin with a purchase request followed by a request for a quote and an actual purchase order. You receive an invoice as shown in this complete order flow. This is an example when management of internal requests is not required. When a purchase is needed, as seen here, the purchase order is created. Now this flow starts at the receipt step. This is generally used in cases where you do not manage purchase orders. Also, although not recommended, it can be used in cases where a product is received that was not ordered, but you decide to keep the product. And this flow starts at the invoice step. This is only used when there is no stock management performed in a company. Now, certain product information must be properly defined in order to process with the purchasing process, including mandatory of type of flow, status, life of a product, and units of measure of the product. There's also optional settings, including setup of a buyer, supplier product cross-reference, quality control policy, and so on. Now, there are document controls as well, including attributes to control quantity, price, and cost, as well as making it mandatory to go to the receiving process and require a purchase request. Let's take a look at defining a product for purchasing. To begin with, you go to the Common Data module, you go to the Products block, and the Products function. We can see all the products have been defined in the left list, and the product here, which is Standard Keyboard, let's take a look at how this product is defined for purchasing. Now, the first thing you select for a product for purchasing is going to be the product category. The product category allows for defaults to flow through to the product and also the product site. To begin with, the product sequence field allows you to automatically generate a product ID, though you can enter one manually. Most important areas are going to be the category types and the type of flow. The type of flow determines if you can sell the product, if you can buy it, if you can manufacture it, deliverable and subcontracting. For purchasing, you would select bought, you probably might se could select manufacturing if it's raw materials, subcontracted also. Generic in the type to allow the product, say an example, to be used for office supplies, purchasing. Other area that you would actually define is the receipt area for management rules, for receiving. How am I going to receive it and where? What type of status is it going to have? Also, the issues flow if you're going to sell the product. On Logistics tab, this is where you determine if the product can be location managed and what are going to be the location categories and the titles for those locations. After you define the product category, you're ready to define the rest of the product. You enter the product ID unless it's automatically generated and also the description. There's several different description fields that you can use. What's going to be important also is the product status. For the most part, the status is active. You can also use the other statuses. As you can see, there are six of them. The different statuses basically allow you to, example, a bot product could be set on shortage to trigger warning message during the creation of a new purchase transaction. And this can be used when your main supplier has a stock shortage to warn about exceptionally long purchase lead time. In addition, there is the use section the service life start and the service life end. Very important area to set up. If you wanted to phase out a product, you can actually set the life end of a product as well. There's also product notes. Product notes allows you to enter note on product and also where you would like this note to appear on what type of transaction. You would use the category to do that. Let's drill down to the category so we can see that. So as you can see, the type of transactions, you can have this note appear on. Also important area to set up on the product is a units unit of measure. Now you can specify where the purchasing unit. It's important when the purchase unit is different than the stocking unit of measure. Now there's a coefficient used for the conversion between the purchasing unit and the stocking unit. 
a specific purchase unit per supplier can be defined in a supplier's tab. Another area of importance is going to be the supply tab. Let's take a look at the supply tab and some of the fields available in the supplies tab, starting with the reorder LT. And this is the default purchase lead time for, for product not managed in stock. Now for product managed in stock, the lead time is set on the product record. The lead time is expressed in calendar days. Note, a purchase lead time can be set as well on the price list allowing you to handle different lead times per supplier. The delivery tolerance percentage, once the received quantity equals the order quantity multiplied by this percentage, the purchase order line is automatically closed. This quantity is expressed in purchasing units. There's also the matching tolerance field. This allows you to set controls on discrepancies either in the quantity, either in an amount, during the reconciliation process between the purchase order and the receipt, and after between the receipt and the supplier invoice. Also the receive product field. This field allows you to specify if the supplier receipt is a mandatory step of the purchase flow. Note for a product managed, a stock, the supplier receipt is mandatory anyway. There's also the mandatory PO request as mentioned earlier. The purchase flow must start with a purchase order request. The buyer field. This allows you to assign a user to a product. By a setup, we can enforce that only this specific user can create a purchase order on the related product. Now, once a buyer is defined in a product, it becomes mandatory to fill in the values in the product site that can differ from the product record. There's a base price. This is the, the default purchase price if no price list exists. Also, the land at cost coefficient a fixed cost unit cost structure. This field allows you to manage the additional cost to calculate the goal cost of the purchase on the top of the order price. Doing so, you anticipate the transportation cost, for instance. Now let's go to the suppliers tab. On the suppliers tab, you can see all the suppliers that carry this product. And you can see all the details down at the bottom. Now taking a look at the details, this tab basically is used to cross-reference a product code with the supplier. Now, by settings, it's possible to enforce the supplier referencing to create a purchase order. With this reference, it's also possible to print the supplier product code on the purchase order. The reference has to be unique. The blocking value allows it to set a control when entering purchase requests and order on current product and supplier. This tab is also used to determine the special values for certain attributes, which will only be applied for a considered supplier, for example, purchase units, minimum quantity to purchase, quality control policy, and specific landing cost definitions. Now, the priority field determines which supplier will be suggested when creating a purchase order from the buyer plan and workbenches. The value zero sets the supplier with the highest priority. Now, text can be entered as well on the product using the text menu in the right panel, as you can see here. Now, the text can be used in purchasing reports as well. Now, after defining a product, the product has to be assigned to a product site. Let's go ahead and select product site from the right panel, which will show you in the left list, you can see this product has been assigned or stored at all of these sites. We can look at the details on a management tab. We can see the stock management area where the product is managed. The ABC class which gives you the, the value of the product. The, the account mode as well. Quality control policies. Sampling and also packing units. The default locations area. Storage as well. The manage area is a very important area. Now, this is where you actually select or link the buyer. As we saw, it can be defined on the product record, but for the product using this product site, it's possible to handle the buyer here. This allows you to handle different buyer for the same product depending on the site. Now, on the product site, let's go ahead and take a look at our planning tab, which is also important. Now, the planning tab basically contains several settings related to purchase. 
There's a purchase lead time that you can define here. When using MRP calculation, this lead time is used to schedule the purchase order suggestions. As the reorder lead time set on the product, this value is used as well when recording a purchase order to default the expected receipt date. The reorder mode also allows you to trigger procurement suggestions according to the available stock. You can choose between MRP, the reorder point, and periodic replenishment. There's also the suggestion types, which defines if the method to replenish the stock is a purchase order or a work order. And finally, you can set product note the same way when on the product record. The note will be specific to the current product and the current site only. And with that, now you know how to define a product for purchasing.